Hello friends, welcome back to Go Tutorials. So far we have seen all the basics of Go programming language. We have seen arrays, we have seen structs, we have seen file handling. So all the basic stuff, all the basic flavors we need to see for a typical programming language have been completed so far in the previous tutorials. From this tutorial onwards, we are going to see something more advanced in Go programming language. As a part of that, today we are going to deal with concurrency. What are concurrency? How what is concurrency? How to deal with concurrency? For those who are already aware of threads in Java programming language, concurrency is more synonymous to this. Threads, we already know threads is a separate process. For those who doesn't know what a thread, I am just telling, thread is a child process to the main. So we have main in our code, we have a main function. So whenever a main function gets executed, it is a main thread. So every part of execution, every part of a process is called a thread. So when main gets executed, it is called as a main thread. Similarly, when main wants to keep some code outside of its process and branches it out from the main process, which is called as a thread. So main, create, main can create a child process, which is outside the scope of main, but it is also being controlled by the life cycle of main. So main creates a separate process which is called as a thread. Similarly, in Go programming language, we have a main process which is called as main Go routine. So the main Go routine is a main thread where the main Go routine can create, it will allow to create a new sub process called a child Go routine, which is a part of main as well. But the execution will happening in the outside the main thread. So a separate process which is branched out from the main process can be termed as a thread or a Go routine. So in a Go programming language, a threads are nothing but a separate lightweight processes. Go routines are nothing but separate lightweight threads being managed by the Go container or Go runtime. This is about threads. Okay. So what is the scope of the threads? Main thread is otherwise called as main Go routine. So the term thread is being replaced as Go routine in Go programming language. So from now onwards, instead of threads, I'm going to mention them as Go routines. So there is a main Go routine. The main Go routine will give birth to a child Go routine. The child Go routine executes something outside the scope of main, but, but both the child Go routine and main Go routine uses the same address space. So that whenever a main Go routine gets completed, the child Go routine life cycle also will be terminated. So in order to keep the child Go routine alive, main should be active. So the main Go routine should be active in order to get the entire process of child Go routine completed. So this is all about Go routines in general. Let us see how to create a Go routine using Go programming language. I am opening the command prompt here maximizing for better readability switching over to our go demo folder right so i'm going to create a file something called go routine demo dot go so i'm creating a package main function main importing format package so here i am printing the word inside main so I'm going to write a function here which is called as wish so what I am trying to do here is the function wish is supposed to print wish go routine as simple as this so in order to call the function we used to call it as wish right so this is the simple code which we used to run using normal functions so the wish function gets first executed, so it prints something inside this, then main code is being executed. Now everything is running as a part of main go routine, right? So this is called as main go routine. So even the function called wish and the format dot print inside main, everything is a part of wish go routine, sorry, main go routine now. Now what we are going to do, we are going to make the function call wish as a separate go routine. So how to create a separate go routine? just to prefix the call with the keyword go, go wish. So what does this statement will do? This statement will fork a new go routine to 
execute the function call for wish so this go wish will create a new go routine to execute the function call for wish so the wish execution will be handled in a separate go routine now if i compile and see the code what happens it prints only inside main the wish method is not getting called why right so the function main is being executed which is a part of main go routine it prints something but before this we have initialized we have invoked a new go routine and we called it what's happening here is while when the go runtime when sees this particular line it creates a new go routine and the new go routine executes and prints wish go routine but it is not returned back because before this go routine gets completed the main the main go routine prints something and ex and comp and exits so here what it is happening is main go routine completes its execution so what is happening here is before the go before the wish go routine before the wish go routine completes the main go routine gets completed it is exited so the wish go routine is not at all executing in order to see the output so the life cycle of main go routine is completed before the wish go routine returns back that is the reason we are not seeing anything printed from the wish go routine in the console so in the console if you see only the content inside the main go routine is being printed so what to do in order to get the wish go routine executed we need to keep the main go routine alive so how to keep the main go routine alive we need to keep the main go routine to wait for a given set of time interval so how to make the main go routine to wait for a while so there is a package which will assist us that package is called as time so we can use the time package to keep the main go routine to wait for a while until the time the wish go routine or any other child go routines if they exists they will complete their work and return back to us so we are using the time package to keep the main go routine wait for a while so how to keep it up time dot sleep this is the sleep function which helps us to keep the main go routine to wait for the given time interval so how much the time interval is one what is that one stands for one into time dot second so this statement will keep the main go routine in wait state for one second by the time the wish go routine will finish its task and return back then the main go routine will complete its execution let us see what will happen if you run this code sorry i made something syntactically missed yes i have forgotten to close the bracket yeah so if i run the code wish go routine then inside main if you run the code it prints wish go routine because the child go routine executes and completed then by the time the main go routine waits for a second then main go routine prints child waiting and main so this is how the execution of go routine is happening in go programming language remember whatever number of child go routines you may have in your code best but the main go routine needs to wait until the child go routines are coming back otherwise it won't happen otherwise the execution will not happen for the child go routines this is very much important to be remembered while dealing with go routines okay now let us see some more example which much more details on the go routines and go routine invocation so let us see one more example for this go routine demo 1 .go. so the same way package main i am declaring function main as simple as this now what i am going to do i am going to write a function function i am going to name it as display so display is the function i am going to create so inside the function i am going to iterate a for loop i equal to 1 i less than equal to 10 i plus plus it is a simple for loop so inside the for loop what i'm going to do format dot print ln the value is i can either print i right i'm printing i right so it is a very simple code so i am invoking 
display here one more display here let us keep a string argument to keep control over the display yeah name string so here I am putting it as name I is not needed I will put the name here first so I am passing values to the string so it is a very simple straightforward code I am invoking the display method with a string it prints 10 numbers and the given string 10 times similarly I am passing the second string again it will print 10 numbers with the given string go run sorry format is not being important <laughs> empty right see here it prints as we expected right one first two first so for the first call it prints all the ten values similarly for the second call it prints all the ten values now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the first call as a go routine go now if I compile and run the code only the second call is being printed one second see here only all the 10 values with the second call is being printed so as we discussed earlier in order to make the go routine executed we need to sleep we need to sleep in between right we need to make the main thread sleep so we can declare a time here we can declare a time here now what I am going to do time dot sleep 1 into time dot second now now if you compile and see what's happening first is being printed and after a pass second is getting called okay so instead of doing the sleep here what I am going to do is I am going to make the sleep happening inside the for loop let us see what happens instead of doing the sleep statement here I am going to make the sleep happening inside the for loop before printing everything I am going to make time dot sleep one star time dot second see for every print for every print of the for loop it prints the one and the string two and the string every time it is being passed now so if I exit and compiles and runs the code see here see the output one first one second two second two first so for every call both the go routines the first go routine and the main go routine the first go the go routine and the main go routine everything get executed see here five first five second six second six first seven first seven second eight second eight first so both the go routines alternatively getting called so here what happens this go routine calls first and it prints one first then this main go routine gets executed so it prints one second similarly the second time the main go routine is executed first with two second then the main the sub go routine display go routine executes again which prints first and second the same way the output is being organized see if I am again executing the code I am stopping it in between see the output the first time the the go routine the display go routine executes then the main go routine so the main go routine executes then the display go routine now it is display go routine then main go routine so the go routine execution is being alternated because we are using go we are using the sleep inside the for loop so whenever the go runtime sees the sleep statement it gives permission to the another thread to execute or it will wait for the current thread to finish and the, it will allow the next thread to continue that is why the reason every thread each and every time the threads are alternating their execution right so let us do some tweaks to the same code and see what happens now what I am going to do I am going to remove this as a normal routine I am removing a go routine from the display call it is a part of main go routine now I am making the second function call as a go routine so instead of the first call as a go routine I am mentioning the second as a go routine now if you run the code if you run the code one first 
to first so only the first execution that is the main go routine parts are executing now the main go routine is completed and it is exited because because the display method is being called it is a main go routine it executes its entire life cycle then only the display go routine is being called so the main go routine exited at this particular point so the go display go routine has no scope at all to print or execute or anything that's why we need to keep the main go routine at last we need to complete the main go routine only at the final stage so we are going to keep this as a main go routine and keep this as a display go routine now if we compile the same process we have expected earlier is being printed the same thing right fine i'm going to do something new here what i'm going to do i'm going to add go here as well so now first to second both of them are part of separate go routine calls now if i run the code nothing is being printed because the main go routine got exited say if you try to print something here So now we will come to know. So both the go routines are triggered, but before they return back, the main go routine is completed by printing the word main. So whenever we need to handle the go routine, we need to write the code in such a way that it is available until the main go routine gets completed. That is, the scope of the go routine should be alive. The scope of main should be alive until the go routine gets completed and written back. That's why, for the reason, we keep the call for the main go routine display in the second statement, whereas using the go routine, new, creating a new go routine for display as the first statement. So, in order, if we are doing like this, the go routine is invoked first. During the time the go routine is sleeping, the main will execute. Then main will sleep by the time the go routine will execute. So they will keep on sharing the time alternately between them. So the go routines will execute in parallel. So this is how we will achieve concurrency using the go routines. In next sessions and all, we are going to see much more details about the channels. Using the channels, we used to pass data between go routines. So keep posted. I will keep you posted on the updates. Please click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell button. This bell button will keep you updated on new videos. If you have any comments or suggestions or anything you want to share, please put them in the comments box given below. Let us catch up in the next video session. Thank you.